All right, so my name is Kelly Van Horn. I work at LinkedIn and I run customer marketing for our sales solutions business. Uh, sales solutions is responsible for helping salespeople on LinkedIn build and nurture relationships with their customers through using our platform. We have LinkedIn and then we also have a premium tool that we call LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And because I work on the customer marketing team, I get to work with some of the world's best salespeople. Literally, our customers are some of the most savvy, socially savvy people that you'll ever meet. <coughs> And they really understand the value of what we call social selling. So being able to find the right person, engage with insights, uh, connect with decision makers, and build their professional brands, and how those things help to propel opportunities for them for their business. Um, it's really inspiring to work with the salespeople that I work with, uh, and so working with our customers is one of the best parts of my current job. Um, what I want to talk about today is how we use uh, professional transformation and the role that professional transformation plays um, in some of the advocacy that we see in the sales solutions business. Um, as I mentioned before, our customers are inspiring to me. And one of the things that's most inspiring is not just the fact that they love Sales Navigator so much, but that they're so dedicated to championing it within their organizations. Um, for those of you that work in the B2B world, you know that being a B2B advocate is not always easy. Even though we like to think that it's easy to implement our software, our platforms, um, that we have something that's plug and play. If anyone of you saw Chris's presentation where he showed you kind of the group of people that were involved in this process for getting his advocacy community launched, you understand that it's actually a little bit more complex than just having a software or a program that works really well. So in reality, <clears throat> for many B2B advocates, advocacy can actually be costly and risky. And this is true especially for the people that are our decision makers and our project champions. Um, not only are they taking on the work, the time and investment of actually either purchasing or rolling out these programs, <coughs> they're also taking on the risk, the professional risk that comes along with failure, right? If the project isn't adopted or it doesn't succeed, then that actually reflects on them as well. Uh, SAP actually in February did a study and asked B2B purchasers what are their biggest concerns when they're making a B2B purchase? 52% of them said uh, the perception that they were uh, wasting money at their company. 23% of them said their biggest concern was losing internal credibility. And so it's kind of scary out there, right? If you're the person who's championing a product or championing a service within your organization and you really believe in it, <clears throat> you kind of have to step out on a limb and make sure that other people are falling behind. One of our best advocates is a senior decision maker at a large multinational corporation. He is extremely visible inside and outside of his organization, but he also spends countless hours working behind the scenes, making sure that cross-functional stakeholders are well informed and putting together rollout plans. And like I mentioned, he's very senior. So if I think about his role, his responsibility, and his scope, he should probably spend about 5% of his time on Sales Navigator. Instead, he spends much more. And so the question is why? When I heard the story of him, I was like, why is he so invested in this? It's great, tell me why. And if you think about your own advocates and the people that are working tirelessly to make your program successful, what's really motivating them and what's driving them to do that? Some people might say competition, some people might say passion, um, some people are just very diligent and get things done. Um, but I'd like to argue that there's a role that plays <clears throat> that's really, really powerful and it's the role of both the, both the promise and the realization of professional transformation. So some people really understand how valuable it is to be a change maker and to be an innovator and to be the person who successfully champions a product or a service within their organization. And that is a motivating force for them because they understand that it will propel them to new opportunities. And so if I think back to the senior decision maker that I was talking about before, he understands this. And if you ask him why he's such a champion and why he's investing so much, he'll tell you it's because he knows if he's successful, it'll continue to put him on a trajectory that will help propel him to new opportunities, both within his own organization and also in the industry. And he's a senior guy, so he still sees the value in it, even though he's already kind of excelled very significantly within his career. And I think that's really the power of the promise of professional transformation. It motivates people to do things they wouldn't otherwise do, especially to benefit you and your programs. I also want to talk about the realization of personal transformation. 
So this is Terry. This is one of our wonderful Rockstar customers. Last year, Terry joined Informatica. She was brand new to her team, brand new to her role, and she wasn't doing very well. She was actually at 35% attainment of her quota, and she had a social selling index score, which is our measure of how well you use social selling activities to uh, in your sales process, of 55. So this is out of 100, which means it's not a great score. And the 35% attainment definitely was lagging behind her peers. So Terry worked with her uh, sales manager. She spent a lot of time investing in uh, making Sales Navigator part of her daily habits. And then she also worked a lot on her social selling capabilities and best practices. And her attainment shot up. By the end of the same quarter, she was at 106% attainment of her quota. And she also had her SSI score jump up to 78.9, which shows that she's using the best practices that we kind of taught her and instilled in her through the training. So obviously we love the story. I love the story. It made me really happy. And so we decided to invite Terry out to our headquarters. We decided to do photography, capture her success story, and focus on her as an individual. Focus on the things that she was doing really, really well and the expertise that she developed by being an advocate of our program. And so it wasn't just about Informatica. We were really creating a platform to elevate Terry and her success. In addition, within her own organization, Terry started to get noticed. There was all this buzz going on about how well she transformed and how much she turned around her performance. Senior leaders at her organization started noticing and asking her, what are your best practices and what can we learn that we can spread throughout the organization? Terry, at the beginning of this year, got promoted. And so this is the power of the realization of professional transformation. Both of these, both the promise and the power of professional, or sorry, the promise and the realization of professional transformation are really powerful for motivating the people who are uh, kind of championing, championing and being advocates for your programs. And so what I want to talk about today is ways that everyone here can start to harness some of the power of the motivation that comes with professional transformation. So three things, try to make it simple. First, run an audit so you understand kind of what you have already and where you can go from there. Then map your destination to know where you do want to go and what you can achieve. And then finally, make sure you're showcasing your standard so that people who can help you are actually able to rally around you. First, running an audit. So what I'd start with is just your existing success stories, right? Go through your organization and understand, are there any stories of professional transformation that already are out there um, based on people who are using your product? And again, it's not about the companies. It's not about the brands behind the individuals. It's about the people that are actually being the champions within, your or within those organizations. You can run a survey. You can pull people in your Influitive Hub if you have one. Just try to collect as much as you can. Then, once you've kind of collected that, if you have enough stories, maybe try to break them into personas. So either by role, purchasing role, or industry, and try to see if there are any trends or themes that you can break out. And then finally, see if there are any common ways that people have been recognized or rewarded externally, right? So is it promotions? Is it PR opportunities? Is it, um, is it uh, external uh, awards? For example, in our industry, there's a top 30 social sellers award that Fo Forbes, um, Forbes published, right? That's a great reward, great recognition. Our customers should be on that list. Once you kind of have a stock of where you've already kind of achieved and what's already happened, then you can map your destination. So start thinking about the three channels that are most important to uh, um, communicate with the key audiences that will actually lead to your advocate's professional transformation. So if you need to talk to their internal teams, right, and their sales managers, maybe you equip the employee with an uh, uh, internal toolkit that they can use to promote themselves. Maybe you make sure you always send a note to the manager of the uh, employee or the advocate to make sure they know the great work that they're doing. If it's external, right, if it's a, a news organization or something like that, then how do you start to create visibility for that news organization of the great work that your advocate is doing. It's all about just making sure that your channel matches your audience so that when you're actually doing the work of promoting uh, your advocate, that it's gonna have the intended effect. And then of course you wanna set goals because if you measure it, you're more likely to do it. And then finally, for each advocate that you actually choose that you want to try to embark on a professional transformation plan for, make sure that you're really clear on what exactly you're trying to achieve. So it goes back to knowing the channels 
if you're really clear on like, what the end goal is, it'll be much easier to get to that for that particular person. Finally, make sure you're showcasing your standards. So of all the success stories that you collected at the top, choose one and just make one best in class example that you can use and point to in the organization and share with everyone else and say, this is what we want to achieve. This is where we're going with some of our advocacy. How can you help us? Sales team, can you identify people that would be good candidates for this at the beginning of your kind of sales process? Maybe we start early by thinking about what the rewards and recognitions are and start to work on that as we're moving through the funnel. Um, you'll also want to make sure that you're training people on exactly what you're looking for so they can start to do the pattern recognition that I just mentioned. And then finally, make sure that you're partnering. So it's obviously going to take a village to make this type of thing successful. So you'll probably part partner with field marketing. You'll probably partner with your customer success team. You'll par probably partner with your social media team. Just map out exactly who you need and who you're dependent on. Um, you'll be much more likely to be successful. In many ways, um, thinking about professional transformation for our advocates is a real shift in mindset for the advocate marketer. I think a lot of advocate marketers spend a lot of time thinking about how do we reward this advocate? How do I reward this advocate? When in reality, the question for a professional transformation is how can the world reward this advocate? Um, but I think it's a really powerful way of making people loyal and motivated when it comes to your programs because it really hits at some of the deepest emotional needs that people have, which is to be and feel successful. And so as I think about kind of adding it to your toolkit, I can't think of a more powerful way of making sure that you're saying thank you to the people who are working hardest for you. Mm.